Hey everybody, welcome back to Magic Orthodoxy. My name is David. So, you've decided to grow your business. You've decided to get out there, to put yourself out there, meet customers, and start making some extra money. You've even gone so far as to print business cards. Now what? How do you pass those cards out? How do you network? That sounds like a great magic question. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for being here. I'm doing these little magic questions every single Wednesday. Today, we're gonna to talk about networking, how to pass out that business card, how to meet new people and make connections. And let me just make a disclaimer right here at the top. I'm talking to magicians, of course, but even though you might not be a magician, the information here goes across the board, especially if you're in the entertainment industry, especially if you're in the wedding industry or event planning or party planning, I think you definitely wanna stick around because the things that I'm gonna talk about today in this video are not only gonna help you, but increase your visibility in your area and help you start making connections with other vendors and meeting potential clients. And of course, making some extra money. But I do wanna to talk to magicians right off the top of this because this is a channel for magicians. Uh, seen a lot of news and buzz lately about going to the different conventions and uh, magicians love that. We love going to conventions. We love meeting other magicians. We love hanging out on forums. We follow other magicians on social media. We love to go to local magic groups. And let me just say, None of that will help your business. <laughs> None of that will help your business. It'll help you get better as a magician, absolutely. And it'll help you uh, improve your skills. It'll help answer questions that you might have. But meeting other magicians and working in those circles, it's not gonna get you the results that you think it will. You need to spend less time with other people that do exactly what you do and you need to spend more time meeting clients and meeting people who could potentially refer you. That is what networking is. Networking is more about meeting potential clients and meeting people who can put you with potential clients. Why, why is that important? Well, it's because 70% of the work that you get will come from referrals. That means somebody is gonna pass your name along somebody is gonna recommend you, and that somebody will be somebody <laughs> that you met face to face. So we need new opportunities, we need to meet new people to make those referrals happen. The second hard truth though is, most magicians tend to be shy, tend to be introverted, tend to be withdrawn. And let me just say, if you've printed out a business card and you wanna start getting yourself out there and you wanna start making connections, you need to become a social butterfly. You need to become friendly, you need to become approachable, you need to try your best to put yourself out there to make those connections. I am an introvert as well. I am an introvert as well. So hopefully the tips that I share with you today are beneficial and will help you start to begin. So you've got that business card, right? You got that business card and now you're gonna make a goal for yourself. Let's say you're gonna make a goal for the week. You're saying, I wanna pass out 10 business cards this week, or I wanna pass out 20 business cards this week. You need that goal in your mind, all right? And there's lots of ways to do that. First of which is a bridal show. A bridal show is a great place to meet potential clients, right? There's different kinds of events for meeting different kinds of people. And of course, you probably wanna meet potential clients and a bridal show is a great place to do that. You're gonna set up a table and you are gonna come in character. Okay, you're not gonna say, you know, when you hire me, I become a different person and I'm really fun. No, you gotta be in character at the bridal show. You need to show them exactly what they're getting, which means you're gonna dress in character, you're gonna act in character, you're gonna be polite, right? You're gonna be polite, you're gonna be courteous. Dress well, act well, talk well, all those things, right? And with those potential clients, you're gonna be passing out your business card. Now that's a good idea, it is, and it is a good form of networking. But a great idea and a great form of networking is to actually go to monthly events where the people that put weddings and parties together come to meet. There are groups in your area that meet 
monthly or once every couple months where the DJs, the wedding planners, the florists, they all get together and they network. And that's the group that you want to find. Okay. That's the group you want to get involved in. So again, uh, you're going to dress well when you go to those groups, you're going to talk well, you're going to be polite. You don't have to come in character uh, to those groups because they're, those, they're not in character. Okay. So you don't have to come in character, but you want a, a nice outfit. You want to be able to stand out. You want people to remember you. And you, this is still a time for you to shine. You want your demeanor to come through because you're an entertainer, right? And again, you're going to have a, you're going to have a goal. I'm at this event and I'm going to pass out 10 cards. I'm going to pass out 20 cards. All right. So you've walked up to a client or you've walked up to a wedding planner and you want to meet them, right? So what are you going to do? You're going to be confident. You are going to be confident because this is somebody that they are going to refer or hire. So they want to feel confident about referring you or hiring you. So acting confident will help sell yourself. And one great way to do that is to just say hi first. If you lock eyes with somebody, say hi. I know our first, our first impulse is to look away, to be shy and to look the other way. But if you're in the five foot radius of them, or if you're five seconds away from walking towards them, this is called the five for five rule. Just approach them and say, hi, say your name, say what you do. That is networking. All right. Meet them, be confident. And then when they're talking, actually listen. <laughs> I know a lot of times when other people talk, we kind of zone out and we're thinking about the next thing we're going to say, but take a posture that you're listening to them. A good posture is eye contact. Look at their eyes. Okay. Or look at their mouth while they're talking. That tells the other person that you're listening. Another thing is just to tilt your head a little bit. We tend to tilt our head when we listen. Sometimes people tilt their head when they watch TV. That means they're concentrating, they're focusing. You want to create that interest, right? You're showing another person. I am interested in what you're saying. Uh, another way is to repeat their name. So they've mentioned their name. Then you're going to use their name back when you talk to them. Okay. And when it's all over, when you think that's a, that was a good conversation, you're going to end it and you're going to extend your hand and you're going to say, good to meet you, Jane, right? Or whatever their name is. You're going to, you're going to put your hand out there and you're going to say, it was nice to meet you or it's good to meet you after you exchange business cards. Right. And then you're going to walk off. I know sometimes we find that one person and you're like, oh, this person's cool. I'm going to hang out with them. That's not networking. The idea behind networking is to meet multiple people. So you're going to walk off. Don't let those conversations go too long. Remember what you had a goal, right? Pass out 20 business cards, pass out 10 business cards. The goal is networking. So the goal is to meet more people, not, not just hang out with one person. And at those events, there's probably two different opportunities to meet people. Now the events that I've gone to, um, obviously you can walk around. There's usually some light food planned and they sometimes have a speaker that comes to talk but there's a time at the beginning where people are kind of walking around and socializing. And at that time you have an elevator pitch. What's an elevator pitch? It's a short spiel. Okay. It's a short little grouping of words that you've remembered that is going to sell you to those other vendors. You need to let them know why they need to know who you are. You need to tell them what you bring. What do you bring to this event? What do you bring to the event they're going to be at? Why would they recommend you? Okay. You're going to have this little spiel ready to go. And of course, if you're a magician, you're going to have a trick ready to go and not some long drawn out, complicated math. Remember where this goes trick. You're going to have a short impactful trick. So short, something that you can repeat over and over and over again, and that's going to hit them hard. It's going to knock them out. It doesn't have to be a trick that you would do at an event. It just has to be something that would blow them away. Now, the second opportunity to meet people at those events is typically where everyone goes around the room. In some of those groups where there's about 50 people or so, what they typically do is they go around the room and everyone says, hi, my name is so-and-so I'm a DJ and you can find me at djdave.com, you know, or whatever. And, and they, and everybody kind of goes, oh, that's a DJ and oh, that's a florist, right? So when that's happening, you are paying attention. Okay. Don't tune out and just kind of wait for your turn. Remember you're here to network. So you want to remember those people, especially 
the people you want to put your business card in their hand. So perhaps DJs, florists, they're probably not going to recommend you, right? But you want to make a beeline towards those event planners and party planners and wedding planners, right? Those are the people that you want to meet. Those are the people that you want to put your business card in their hand. You want them to remember you. How do you do that? Well, remember their name, right? So that when you go to approach them, say, hi, Tiffany, my name is David, and I saw that you were a wedding planner. I'm a magician, whatever. Whatever your spiel is, right? You're going to walk up to them and you've remembered their name. That's going to impress them. Second thing, if you're a magician, wedding planners and event planners tend to be heavy on social media. They really have really good Facebook pages. Use that to your advantage. Okay, Tiffany says she's a wedding planner. You got her name. And now, before you go approach her, you're going to quickly look her up on Facebook and you're going to learn some key things about her. You could use those details in a magic trick, especially a mentalism trick, that would blow her away. And when you approach her, you don't need to act like you remember her, right? You don't need to do that. You just need to walk up and say, hi, my name is David. What do you, guys, what do, you do? Oh, you're an event planner. Well, you already know that, but now you're playing the part, right? And you're going to use some of the information that you learned as a way to kind of blow her away and be memorable. And that's another great way to make a connection. Now, remember I said when you meet somebody face to face, you're going to be nice, polite, shake their hand, all that, and perhaps do a trick for them. But if you're in the larger group setting and they're going around the room and you're all introducing yourself, this is another time to do a great magic trick. Think about it. You can do an elimination trick because you have all these people. You could say, hey, do you guys mind if I do a trick with all of you right now? It'll only take a minute. Great. Then you do a little this or that, right? It's like you're going to find somebody in the room that you're going to force. So let's say Bob. Bob's your force person. That's the person that's going to win, right? And you've already written Bob's information down on a piece of paper and a prediction and given it to somebody else. And now you're just going to do the raised hand thing where you're like, do you this, like this or like this? And everybody who put their hand down can sit down. And then you do another question. Everybody who did this puts your hand down. And you start weeding them all down until it's just Bob standing. And you're saying, okay, it's just Bob. So what's your name, sir? Bob, right? Okay, I made a prediction and I gave it to so-and-so. Can you open that letter? And they're going to say, I predict that the person standing will be wearing a green vest and be named Bob. Then you just did a magic trick for the entire room of potential vendors. And now what are they going to do? They're going to make a beeline towards you, right? They're going to make a beeline towards you and they're going to ask you for your business card. Done. And because the goal is networking, you can now use the information that you have, the people that you've met, and you can help make new connections. Networking is not just them referring you to clients. Networking is also you referring them to other vendors and other clients as well. If you can help them, they can help you. So in other words, maybe you're at a different event and you meet somebody and you think to yourself, you know what? This person really needs to meet this person that I met at this other event. If you can do that favor and bridge that gap for another vendor, they'll remember you and they'll become your friend and they will do twice the work they did before to help you and to help your business. When you help make connections, when you are beneficial to everyone, that is when networking truly starts to benefit you because there's a difference between the people that are just in there to elevate themselves those people will not get far, all right? You're joining this group to elevate yourself, sure, to get your name out there, but you're there to network, which means you're there to help others. There's an old saying, a rising tide lifts all boats, right? A rising tide lifts all boats. So you don't want to think about everybody in the room as being a potential uh, competitor. You want to think of them as being a friend. They are going to help you you are going to help them. So if you can be that help, that's why you need to listen when people are talking to you, right? So if you can be that help, it's going to go a long way. Then after you've met them, maybe a, a month or so after you've met them, you're going to follow up with them. Now, how? Well, you grab their business card, right? And you're going to put those into a folder. You're going to start making an email list of different people, different clients, different potential vendors, and you're going to send them a follow-up email. 
Don't be shy about this. Don't be shy because remember, you want their help. You want their help. So you need to put yourself out there. Just like having your business card posted in a lot of different places will help people remember your name. If you keep popping up in somebody's email what, three or four times a year, they're gonna remember your name, all right? And you need a reason. You can't just pop back up and say, remember me, make sure you hire me. No, no, no. You wanna pop up with a reason. You need a reason for your call. And here's the thing, you can make up a reason, <laughs> right? It can be totally fake. You can say something like, hey, I had a date open up. Any takers? You tell that to a wedding vendor. It's like, hey, I have a weekend open up. I have a weekend free. Or hey, I was just looking at March and I'm free, okay? That makes it sound like you're normally really busy, but you saw a little window in your very busy schedule and you want to let these wedding vendors know, hey, I've got time in here if you need me, okay? Or another thing could be, hey, I'm running a special and I wanted you to know about it. Your special could be anything you want, right? It could be a discount, it could be extra added time, right, whatever. But you letting them know tells them that you were thinking about them. Like, hey, you're a wedding planner, I was running a special uh, and I wanted you to know. I remember meeting you and I wanted you to know. That's gonna make them feel special. The key thing is to stay visible. Stay visible with those people. Don't just hit them once and never go back to them. You need to stay visible all the time. If they only met you once and they never hear from you again, it's kind of like it never happened, all right? You wanna stay in their memory. So stay in constant communication with the people that you wanna stay in touch with, all right? It's on you. Connect via email, connect via blog, social media platforms, of course, and one-on-one, -on -one, in person. Get up off the chair, walk outside, <laughs> and meet people. That's what connecting is all about. All right, so going to a bridal show is a good idea to meet new clients. Going to a vendor club or a vendor community group uh, once a month or once every couple months is also a great way to network. What else could you do? What else can you do with your business card? Now, let me just say, if you think that having a business card is old school and you're gonna do everything digital and do everything online, think again, okay? My wife works in the wedding industry and she works with all of these vendors all the time. And guess what? They all have business cards and they all use them and they're all successful. If you really wanna be memorable, you wanna put a physical object in their hand, all right? And you need to make sure that business card works for you. In other words, it has all your social media links on it and it communicates what you do. <laughs> Who are you, right? Especially if you're a bride and you're walking around a bridal show, she's gonna pick up a lot of business cards, all right? Yours needs to say magician, <laughs> mentalist, tarot reader, mind reader, right? Comedian, stand-up comic, right? Whatever, it needs to say what you are. If it just says Billy Smith, she doesn't remember who Billy Smith was at the end of the day. It, it can't just have a microphone on it. What does that mean? Are you a DJ or are you a stand-up comic, right? It, it needs to say what you are so that when they go home, they go, oh, I met this magician or you know, stand-up comic, he was really good, right? You want that. So make sure you have a good business card. And please, don't get your business card from the cheapo $1.99 will give you a thousand business cards place. Don't do that. And don't design your business card using Microsoft Publisher, all right? Get good business cards, printed on good stock, get them designed, because this is the one thing that is leaving your hand and going out into the world and working for you. So you don't want it to be cheap, you don't want it to look cheap, you want it to look professional because you're a professional. And this is the thing that is gonna represent you. So make sure you have a good business card and you put it to work. How? How do you put your business card to work? Okay, here's another, here's another tip. Mail them, mail them in bulk to event centers, all right? So there are venues in your area in my area, there's 10, there's 10 just within 30 minutes, both directions from me. So I'm in the middle. I could go 30 minutes that way or 30 minutes that way. There's 10 venues in my area, all right? So let's just say uh, I mail a stack of cards, let's say 50, to every single one of those venues, all right? I don't even have to go. 
I don't have to even go there. I don't have to meet anyone. I don't have to shake any hands. I put them in the mail with a letter that says, hi, my name is David. I live in the area. I live in your zip code. I live in your area code. And I would love to be recommended as an entertainer, a florist or whatever in, in your events. Because here's the thing, event venues don't just host weddings. They host lots of parties, all kinds of parties. And they have a party on Friday and Saturday and Sunday every single week. All right. In fact, somebody is getting married locally by you every single week at every single event venue on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday all year long. They have to be because otherwise those venues couldn't stay in business. So they are already networking. Those places are networking, trying to fill their venues so that they have money, right? So they can pay rent. So they want to refer you for their party because they want their parties to be great. So what they're going to do is they're going to get your business cards in the mail and they're going to put them into little packages that they give to potential clients. So someone comes in, they're looking to host a party. Someone comes in, they're looking to host a wedding. They're going to give them a little package and they're going to say, here, these are the people that we recommend. And they're going to stick the magician's business card in there. They're going to stick the stand-up comics business card in there. And you didn't have to do anything. All you had to do was put a stamp on a package and send it in. And now your business card is being sent out to potential clients for free. And a lot of times when they get down to one business card, they'll send you an email and they'll say, Hey, we're running low on your business card. I love getting those emails. I love getting those emails because that means they're sending them out. People are taking them and I'm going to send them some more. It only costs you postage and the cost of printing your business cards. And again, you don't even have to make the drive. You just have to look up who those venues are, mail them your cards with a letter introducing yourself and asking them, can you kindly put these in your packages and refer me to your potential clients? Another thing you can do with your business card, look up, look up, walk around with your business card and a little box of push pins. Okay. You want to carry your own push pins. And whenever you go out into the real world, <laughs> you're going to go get your oil changed. You're going to go get a cup of coffee. Look up because chances are there's a community bulletin board in that office. Now you probably never noticed them before, but they are there. Start looking around for them. Maybe not the popular coffee places. Go into the little ma and pa coffee places. Go into any little ma and pa shop and they probably have a bulletin board that advertises community events or has business cards push pinned into it. Don't steal somebody else's push pin, right? You brought your own. You can make them fun, make them purple, make them bright yellow, make them sparkly, right? Stick them up there. People don't have to take your business card. They just have to see it. Sometimes people will take a picture of it. Okay. And there's a couple ways of thinking about it. Number one, it's kind of like a little mini billboard, right? I'm getting my coffee. I'm pouring my creamer in and I look up and I'm looking at the business cards and I see, oh, there's one for magic Dave, right? Oh, magic Dave. Well, then I go to my, get my oil changed and I'm waiting and I'm walking around to get my oil, ch oil changed. And I look at their community bulletin board and there it is again, another business card for magic Dave. Now that person has seen your name twice, right? And it starts to get into the back of their mind. And then even maybe a year from now, their husband says, Hey honey, I think we should have a magician come to our, our kickoff party. Do you, do you know anybody? What do you think we should do? And you say, I've seen this guy's business card at a couple different places. I think his name is magic Dave. Well, how do they remember that? Because they've seen your business card in several places in their community and they've seen it over and over and over again. And it starts to just subliminally get in there. Your business card can become a little tiny bulletin board, right? Or a little tiny billboard for people to see. Now, here's the other thing you should do. When you see one of those bulletin boards, don't just pin it up there and walk out. Okay. You got, this is where networking comes in. You got to be a little extrovert. You got to put yourself out there, walk up to the counter, look somebody in the eye, a real human being and say, hi, my name is David. I'm a magician. Is it okay if I put up my business card on your bulletin board? They're going to say yes. Most people don't even ask, but you're going to ask because why? Because now you've just met this person and who knows they could be the owner. Maybe they do a stand-up night. Maybe they do an open mic night. 
and they can tell you about that. Or maybe they know about an open mic night that they could tell you about. Okay, so there you're making a connection. And when you say, I'm a magician or I'm a stand up comic, what are they gonna say? Tell me a joke, do a trick. You just got an open invitation to do a trick in a public place. Take it, take it, right? Do a trick. You need to have those tricks ready. You need to have those jokes ready. Whatever it is you do, you should be ready to show potential clients what you do. And it's a great way to, to get out there. I mean, most of us, when we walk around in public, you might be too shy to perform magic for strangers. But if you introduce yourself that way, you say, hi, my name is David and I'm a magician. That's the first thing they're going to say. Show me a magic trick. And when they give you permission, it'll give you confidence. All right. So I said coffee shops. I said uh, places to get your oil changed. What are some other places you could hang your business cards? Uh, intermural sports leagues, uh, classrooms, uh, workshops, uh, happy hours. Uh, you could put your name out there with an alumni association, right? Because they have, they have parties. Um, use Twitter, use LinkedIn, use social media. Look around, right? Look up when you're out and about. Look up. Look for places to potentially put your card or put your card in someone's hand. All right, so I know uh, making a list like this seems easy, right? And you can listen to this video and you're like, oh yeah, this is great. Great advice, great advice, great advice. Networking is not easy. It isn't. It is not easy. It does not come naturally to a lot of us. But if you do it right, it is going to save you time and it's going to save you money, especially if you're busy during the week. If you're busy during the week and you've got a, you know, a real job where you make, that's where you make your income, but you're trying to get this little business off the ground, you want to save as much time as you can. So invest in networking. Spend a couple hours a day uh, or a couple hours a week if you have it. Devote some time to your business. You need to, just because you printed business cards doesn't mean they're going to start flying off the shelf. Just because you made a Facebook page doesn't mean people are going to go find it. You need to physically stand up, <laughs> walk out the door, and you need to network. And if you're consistent, that's the thing. You got to be consistent. You can't just go to one network meeting and just hope that, oh, they'll, they'll reach out to me. They'll find me. That. No, no, no. You got to be consistent. You got to reach out again and again and again. All right. Right before I go, I want to give you some further reading. Okay. So if you are a magician, there's two books out there that I would highly recommend. They are both a little harder to find. They've been in print for a while, but uh, they get recommended time and time again. So again, if you're a magician, I would recommend uh, The Approach by Jamie Grant. Great book, highly recommended. This is going to save you a lot of time and a lot of money. And Close Up, The Real Secrets of Magic by David Stone. Those are two great business model, business and networking style books for magicians to help you with your business. And you don't need to read just books on magic or books written by magicians. Of course, you'll want to read books uh, that just help small businesses or help people like you uh, get off the ground and get going. Uh, two that I can recommend for you, both from Gary V or Gary Vaynerchuk. Uh, the first one is Crushing It, How Great Entrepreneurs Build Their Business and Influence and how you can too. That is a more recent title. Okay. That's a recent title. Great book. He got, he has another one that's a little bit older. He wrote it a little longer ago, but if you can find either one, uh, they're really good. So the older one is just called crush it. Why now is the time to cash in on your passion. Make sure you read books that are written for people who are trying to start their own business. Okay. You don't need to listen to the voices that are in your own industry. Sometimes when we read uh, books written by other people in other industries, you do some cross platforming, cross training that can really help you. Also at the top of this, I talked about introverts and how sometimes magicians tend to be a little shy. Let me give you a book that'll help with that. And it's called the introvert advantage, how quiet people can thrive in an extrovert world. And it's written by Marty, Olson Laney. And that is a great book, especially if you're an introvert like me and you have a little trouble getting out there, socializing, getting energy, right? Getting energy when you're in a crowded room. And that's everything I can say about networking. That's everything I know. And I hope that helps you out. 
And now is the best part because this is the internet, because this is you know social media and we're putting that out into the world, you can contribute. You can add your own polite piece of advice that'll benefit others. You know, when we share information, that is when the internet becomes a great place. When I can share something, you can share something. It's the exchange of ideas. And so if while I was talking, you thought of something or you had an idea or you agreed with something I said, put that down below and share that with somebody else. That will benefit everyone. Hey, thanks for watching. Thanks for the idea of doing this. Uh, I watch and read all of your suggestions and I will try to get to all of them. Have a great day.